How's it going guys? Uh, we're here for part four uh, of the five-speed conversion. Uh, we went to the junkyard today and I got um, some of the shift linkage hardware stuff I needed um, that was missing from the, the five-speed I got. And I scored this thing because today was half off day and so this is a, um, a, a, tra a U-Haul trailer hitch for a first-gen wagon. Um, so I picked this thing up for 14 bucks today. So, I mean, I could not pass that up. Um, the, uh, I think U-Haul wanted like 350 bucks or something uh, to make one for me. And this one's already made for a first gen, so it's perfect. Um, the only thing is I got to drill out a hole right here. So I got my drill out here. Um, I got to put a, I want to put a bolt in between here because this thing doesn't come out, but it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any, you know, mechanism to secure this ball in here. So. I'm just going to drill it out through it and then uh, put a bolt there. Alright, so I got my cart boy kit in here. I don't know if you can see right there. It's all bolted in. So I'm going to install my shift linkage. I just need to get this part down in here and kind of pop it in the hole like that. Kind of like that. There we go. And obviously it's not connected to anything really, but there's a shifter. So I also picked up this from uh, the junkyard. This is the, the trim piece that goes around the shifter. Because um, on the automatic one, this hole is very elongated for the automatic shifter to go. So the boot really won't fit. Um, the boot just kind of goes on these little prongs here. And I'm pretty sure that these will actually go through those holes um, in, the, in the, the chassis and hold the, the rubber boot underneath in place as well. So it's pretty cool. It was half price day. Um, so I got all this stuff pretty cheap. So I figured I'd, <clears throat> I'd show you guys the finished product. Um, this side has a speaker in and everything. You can just see it just kind of comes out of the bottom right here. I might notch this right here just so this goes down all the way, but it's pretty much what it'll look like um, all finished. Um, on that side, I still got to get a new speaker, but this side's all done. Um, this thing's rock solid, so pretty excited about that. Shout out to Daniel for uh, hooking me up with this. So I don't know if I showed the, fin the finished product of this thing either. Um, I ended up just painting it black with some high temp caliper paint because um, this thing does get pretty hot. So I think this is good to 500 degrees. So I think that should be good enough. I mean, eventually it'll probably chip off and look like shit again, but um, I think it looks pretty nice for now. Um, I got a new little vent cap to go in here. Uh, I still need to get the actual gasket to go around this um, around this edge. Um, so I'm still waiting on a few more things. I gotta get a new pilot bearing and throwout bearing. Um, and the oil separator plate. Um, but I got my rear main seal, so I'm gonna work on getting that old seal out. I've already gone in there and kind of cleaned it up a bit. So we just need to get the old seal out so we can get the new one in. Here's my new rear main seal right here. If anybody wanted to see the part number from Subaru, because you should always use OEM stuff like this, because um, you don't want to have to take the transmission out twice. I've already gone through that. <laughs> it's not fun. So I didn't even show you guys these. Um, these are my new 17 inch MSRs that I got. I traded my old wheels uh, to my buddy Alfred. Um, so he had these and he just didn't like having such a small sidewall. Um, he had them on his 90, 90 front wheel drive legacy. So he had two different types of tires on here. And these were the ones he had on the on the front, I think, and they're all they're all chewed up and junk anyway. So, but the ones on the bottom are these real cheap tires, but they uh, they have pretty good tread life. So, I think what I'm gonna do is get another two of these that are matching, so I can have a matching set, and I might just have them shaved down because um, you kind of need on the Subarus you kind of need to have all the tires um, about the same tread depth, um, otherwise it can mess with like the center diff and cause problems potentially so 
I'm gonna get some new tires put on these. Um, and with that five mil spacer, these should fit uh, the new brakes, so the four pots. Okay, so before I get started on the rear main seal and all that, um, I got these new sway bar end links and bushings. Um, if anybody wonders what the part number is for the for Turbo Legacy bushings, uh, I think it's an 18 mil sway bar. Um, eventually, I'm going to do the Tribeca sway bar upgrade that we did on Forrest's car, which we got a video on. If anybody's interested, um, but. I just basically got to take these out here and here. It's all 12 mil bolts, so there's one here for the actual bushing on each side. So just take those off um, and take the old links out. Um, and I gotta go pick up some more from uh, O'Reilly's for the rear. They had to special order them for me because um, they're kind of hard to find, it turns out. So let me get these taken off. Bottom and this top one's a 14, so. There we go. Get this old blown out one out of here. So it's all in nice and tight, brand new. So I'm gonna take these 12 mils off. I gotta go to the other side of this one, but just take these 12 mil bolts off the bushings. I got these brand new ones. But yeah, as you can see, old, new. So this will just pop on like that. And it should just clip together like that and we'll just put it under here. And this little thing, goes in like that and this part is a fun part is to get this to go in you gotta pull the sway bar down a little bit to get it to pop in the there we go like that and then you gotta push it up while you're pushing the, the bolt in there and tighten it down because it's only a 12 mil so it can't really support it very much Alright, let's see if I can struggle to get this thing in here. And there we go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I'm just draining the oil right now. Uh, it doesn't look too bad for about 5,000 miles. It's kind of dark, but it's an old engine, so it's expected. Um, I'm gonna throw on this OEM Subaru oil filter. Um, these things are really cheap from the dealer, so I might as well just get them from them um, instead of using some, you know, cheap brand or something. Um, I also got a new uh, gasket for the drain plug, so. I'm going to throw that on. Uh, I'm not going to put oil in it quite yet, um, but I mean, it's not going to be running for quite a while, so it doesn't really matter right now. All right, let's let that drain a little bit. It's the old one. And uh, I'm going to put the new gasket on the drain plug, and I'll just leave it like that until I'm ready to put oil in it. It's always a good idea to take a little bit of oil and either you either got to put it on the O-ring right here and some of the threads or what a lot of people like to do is actually fill up the oil filter with oil first and then put it on but um, you don't really have to it's just kind of a good practice to do um, to make sure you know everything's um, primed and ready to go as oil right when you first started up but just make sure not to over tighten these it should just be hand tight until it stops like that and that's it. 
All right, so I didn't film much, but I got my new sway bar links and bushings in in the rear. Uh, it was just like the front, so I mean, didn't really see a point in filming it. Um, this, what was interesting is this bolt right here was completely seized, so I had to find a new one uh, that was 14 millimeter. Um, that went on nicely. Uh, these end links were actually a pain in the ass to find. Uh, I had a special order them, um, and it took forever to get here. But I got my uh, e-brake cable ins reinstalled. Uh, just pushed it back up through the floor, and there's a couple 12 mil bolts that bolted on. Um, and I took off um, the rest of the ABS uh, wheel sensor uh, wiring that goes along the control arm here. So uh, that's all gone finally. Um, I cleaned up this stuff in here a little bit just because I wanted it to look a little bit nicer in here. Um, I got this little uh, pin off my brake line so I just need to take the little fitting off right here and I can take these stock brake lines off and install the new StopTech braided, braided lines I got um, and get that going because so I think I have to do all of them so so you can see I got uh, the cables reattached right here to the the e-brake uh, let's put the 12 mm bolts back in I need to find a bunch of little I guess maybe like 6 mil or 8 mil bolts um, to go in these holes right here to, to secure this boot around the transmission tunnel um, there are a couple underneath this ABS computer, so I'm probably not going to be able to get to those because these have these crazy star bolts and I'm, I don't even want to mess with it. So I'm just going to do all the ones I can reach um, and then get this thing all tightened up and I can start putting the interior back together. But it's looking pretty good. And as far as this thing goes, um, I can I can bolt it in except for these bolts right here is because there's there's marks on the chassis but there's no holes so I have to drill holes in the chassis and and put a nut through the other side so um, this is probably gonna have to wait for a little while uh, and I also gotta figure out the the, the the brake light wiring and everything for a trailer because I got all that from the junkyard too alright so next what I really want to do is change this rear main seal um, you can see I got it cleaned up quite a bit this is that oil separator plate. That's where it goes right here. That's where it was leaking the worst. Um, this thing didn't look too bad, but it's really hard. And this is the only time to, to seal it, so I'm gonna try to pop this thing out. It's really hard because you have you can't like stick a screwdriver in between it and like because you mess up the mating surface right there and it'll leak. So um, you gotta just use like a pick or a flathead and just kind of try to pick it out. This is not going to work. It's just coming apart. This thing's going to be a huge pain in the ass. There we go. There we go. So yeah, this thing is toast. It's not supposed to be rock hard like that. And this is actually... This is funny is this is black, so I'm pretty sure since this is black it was made between or before 1997. I think it's when they switched over to the brown um, seals and stuff. Um, they got started making them out of different manufacturing plant or something like that. So this thing is probably the original rear main seal because this thing is automatic and I mean how often does an automatic have to come out of the car? You know, there's, there's no clutch or anything to change so it's probably the original seal. So yeah, the uh, new gasket is brown, so you can see. Um, so this is like the new style or whatever. It's it's the same as this, but they just made out, made out of a different material, I guess, in a different ma manufacturing plant. But um, this right here is probably the best tool I've ever found <laughs> to uh, put these in. It's a two and five sixteenths inch uh, socket impact socket um, that Forrest got at one of his old jobs um, where they didn't, they didn't need it anymore they said he could have it and it is the perfect size of a rear main seal so this makes it super easy to just kinda put this up and hammer on the back of this and you can hammer the seal in evenly so got it cleaned up got the new, new seal kinda in place 
Um, I just need to uh, get my big ass socket and knock it in a little bit. It's kind of going in. All right, so I got this all hammered in. Um, I ended up just using like the back of a, a ratchet just to kind of pop it in the rest of the way. It was really, really tight. I uh, do not recommend oiling this at all. Maybe a little bit on the on the, on the crank side, but definitely not on the outside. Um, but it should be flush with the outside, just like that. So it should seal good. All right, so on to the master cylinder. Um, you can see I got it marked right here. Um, so if you want to have a hydraulic clutch and the top mount intercooler setup that I have on one of these, you're gonna have to do this. Um, so. Basically you just cut it right above the max letters, so I just drew a line kind of half-ass all the way around. Um, and then I'm just going to use the saw and just hack through it. Um, so I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. But the lid should still work on it because it's kind of a suction kind of lid, so it should still work just fine. Cut the top of it off. Um, I highly recommend putting something in here to keep the, the plastic shavings from getting all inside. <laughs> but should just clean this up a bit and the lid should just work on that I mean I'll have to test it and see but yep so lid works just fine um, it doesn't have like a real locking thing but it's like suctioned in there and the intercooler is going to be sitting on top of it so um, I might take part of the cap off inside here if I can just to, so I don't have to run so little fluid but it, I mean, it should be, it should sit somewhere in the middle and this will kind of cap it off and it'll be, it'll be enough fluid. A lot of people do this online, so. All right, so I just got it cleaned up and I took this little extra plate thing that's like a spacer to push the level down um, off of there so it gave me a little more room. So now when I pop this thing in there, it has a suction seal and it only goes just a little bit below the max line, so should be able to hold plenty of fluid um, and I do have an extra one of these just in case I need for some reason it's it's mess it's you know messes it up and I need another one to, to try again and give it maybe give it some more slack on the top here not cut so much off but I think this will work um, this is what I've seen other people do online on like like a CBBS and stuff like that so um, should work so I'm working on ovaling out the pedals. I got this uh, giant file on a drill. And I'm basically just trying to oval out those holes. I kind of marked it with a Sharpie. Um, they just kind of be a, need to be down and a little bit over to the right a little bit. So this is going to take forever, but I got to get these holes bigger so I can actually bolt this all the way in. And the one over on the clutch, uh, right above the gas pedal for the clutch, um, is way off there's no way I could bolt it in um, I'd have to like cut and weld it to basically get it to work and that's just not gonna work for me so um, I don't think it's really gonna matter because the master cylinder is pinned in there so tightly that it should hold together just fine all right so I got one of the holes all ovaled out as you can see I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a be good enough uh, it's quite big so I gotta work on the other one now um, and then I can try to, try to test fit it in there um, found it easier to just use the file in my hand and press against it uh, than rather than using the um, the drill it just didn't really work very well all right so finally got some success here you can see up in there I got uh, these two bolts in. I had to oval them out with the file a lot, um, but I finally got them in. Uh, they, it was quite a struggle. They kind of wanted to strip and actually ruined one of the bolts, but it's all in finally. So I got the brake booster uh, bolts all tightened up. Um, I just got to put in the brake switch and bolt in the master cylinder all the way and this part should be almost done. All right, so I got pretty much everything hooked up. I got my brake switch installed. I also installed the one on the clutch, even though I'm not using one. Um, it's still gonna help me adjust the clutch and everything. 
Uh, I got the master cylinder all figured out. I had to take it back out again and extend the rod. Fucking motorcycles. Um, I had to extend the rod a little bit to get it to reach the clutch uh, pivot point. So now I just need to reattach this computer and zip tie up all these extra wires and stuff. All right, so I got the all the, the wiring and everything kind of tucked up in here. Just use some zip ties. Um, it should be exactly where I need it to be. Um, that part right there, I still have to bolt onto the plastic cover, so I'm probably going to see about putting that cover on right now. All right, well there we have it. Pedals are all installed. Uh, we might have to go in and do some final adjustments here and there, but um, especially when we're bleeding the clutch and the brakes. But everything's plugged in and ready to go. All right, so now I'm going to work on. Um, I already got my e-brake and everything reinstalled. Um, these things were a pain in the ass to stick up to the floor, um, and I got. I found these little flathead bolts um, that I put the the boot on with so that's all good to go so I'm gonna put in my center console again um, so I can start mocking up the the, um, the the new boot I have for it and all that stuff alright so <clears throat> I just put this piece in it just screws in with four screws there and there and on the sides um, but it's looking pretty good um, now I'm gonna bring the actual console in here and put the seat belts and everything through and uh, should be good to go. All right, so I got my new brake lines up in the front installed. Uh, these are the StopTech uh, name brand braided brake lines. Um, they weren't cheap, but we just had to disconnect them right here. Um, and the hard line right here actually started to strip out, so we tried to make our own little tool by cutting the end out of here. Um, and so we can get that on there, but it still wanted to strip, so I ended up using vice grips. But it's a pretty simple install. We still got to do it to the rear. Um, it didn't really feel much, but that should be it. And if look inside here. I got this all installed, ready to go. This is a different color because this is um, you know, this whole thing is different from the automatic to manual. So I got this one from the junkyard, but. It's looking good. Really excited about this eBay shift knob I got. Um, it's pretty cheap and looks great. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for this week. Um, I'm gonna do the rest of the brake lines later. Um, I think next time I should have the rest of the parts I need to uh, do like the oil separator plate um, and hopefully get the transmission in. That's the plan for next week. Um, there's still a bunch of stuff I gotta buy. I gotta get the cover seal for the rear diff so I can install that. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the progress we made. So uh, if you guys want to follow this build, just go ahead and subscribe to us. Um, and thanks for watching. See you next time.